that attributes, right? But I thought maybe before we part ways, just uh, maybe we can do the Lusaka Times example, I guess, if people are interested. Just give you a sneak preview of what you are supposed to be doing, right? Cut to the chase here. So we, we are on Lusaka Times, right? And we want to, we say we want to convert titles into like a form that the estimators will be able to estimate. What we're saying is that this text, text that we see on Lusaka Times would have to be converted into numbers. And what better way to transform into numbers than to use either count vectorizer or TFIDF vectorizer, right? And it's easy, really. All you do is you go through a systematic process. That we know that Osaka Times has an REST API. So we go to REST API and figure out that this is how we gain access to it. And all you have to do is extract the data, you collect the data. So uh, we are going to say, let's see, Osaka Times uh, URL. Oh my God, URL is equal to, just copy, copy the URL with the post, right? Put it there and then I'll say, uh, okay, I'll say I'll import, I'll import the request, uh, this library here and then I'll say, the looks like a times URL response is equal to, about that request, but let's say get, and then I'll say val Lusaka times URL, right? Uh, so I get that, I extract that, and then the next thing I need to do is I'll say, uh, it turns out that the, the response that I get here, again, help is quite useful, right? You can do a help to get a sense of what sort of method you have access to in Python or DR, right? DR is probably much better. Uh, what you immediately notice is this, this response variable that I've created enables me to gain access to the text associated with, uh, so let me just showcase here what I mean, response.text, this is what I get, right? The actual text associated with what I'm pulling from here. Uh, another thing I could do is uh, take a peek at uh, uh, row, right? Uh, so it's an object obviously, but how about JSON? Is probably what we want. If you notice, we have uh, we have JSON somewhere here. Where is it? Oh my goodness. JSON, right? JSON is probably what I want because I know that this sort of output is encoded in JSON. So if I do that, I have access to like a JSON response, right? So what I can do is uh, I can just say, I'm going to assign second time payload or something. I'll assign, I'll create a new variable that's going to hold the JSON response. And then I'll just take a sneak peek at this, this newly created variable to see how large it is. So I only have like 10, right? Because this is paginated, so I have 10 things that I'm working with here. Uh, of course, you know that for you to get the other, like if you are harvesting data from here, for you to get the other data, you'd have to look through the different pages, right? Until you exhaust all the, but you know this because you've extracted using REST API from the people working with the job site, right? Um, so I'll create the payload, I get the length here, and then something else I want to do is just to confirm what sort of what sort of attribute I'm working with. And I see that it's a list. Because it's a list, what I can do is I can take a peek at some of the some of the uh, some of the objects associated with this list, right? I hope there's no print, there's no pretty print. Uh, I can look at the the objects here. And you notice if I pick on one and I because I know the structure by looking at this, I know how a typical article is sort of like structured, right? Look at this, ID, URL, right? This would be like a JSON, right? Dictionaries here. So I'll come here and I would say, uh, okay, if this is, if I get the first object, I can take a look at something like the title, right? I can take a look at something like the except, the except which is like a, so sort of like a summary or something, right? So come here and I would say, instead of title, maybe I get except, right? You see that I have access to this, but let's say we're working with titles. You know that I have titles like so. What I can further do is because this title, the result is a dictionary. If you look at this result here, yeah, the dictionary. What I could do is further just say, and let me just quickly get to the point here because I think people already know this. I could say I want to get the this text, the actual text, so that I have the text to work with. This is what I would want to transform, right? Assuming I'm working with. I'm working with, uh, uh, I'm working with text, the titles on Osaka Times, right? So 
uh, I know that this is what I want. Uh, what I do is I get to a stage where I'll say, okay, fine, I'll create another variable called Lusaka time payload. Uh, I'll call these titles. I say before I create this payload, I could say, uh, I'm going to figure out exactly how I'm going to process all the 10 items. Because of the 10 items, what I'm looking at here is just the sample item. So I can just take, take advantage of uh, so-called uh, list comprehension from Python and just say, okay, what I want to do is I want to say title uh, for var title, uh, come on, in, come on, in, in this list here, in this payload, right? This list, because this is a list. This is what I'm going to get. But what I want to do is I want to get, I want to get everything that is, and so that title, I want to get everything that's associated with the title. And then I want to strip out the, the because inside here is a, is a dictionary. And then I'll get the titles. If you notice now, I have the actual titles. Title number one, title number two, but of course, clearly, guys, we haven't we haven't cleaned this stuff up, right? It's not in any way um, pre-processed here. Uh, stop words are still in here. Numbers are still in here. Funny characters that we need to strip out. So this goes to the people working on the job site. Make sure that you remove those stray characters. Any URLs have to be cleaned out, right? So I do that, and then maybe what I can do for good measures, I can just take advantage of this comprehension and just say, I just want to get the the uh, lowercase version of this, that's how far I'll go with this, right? So finally, I have I have this stuff in a form that I really understand. And you notice that I can pick first list item, I can pick the last list item. And I know this makes sense, right? After I do this now, I can say, I'm gonna assign this particular array here, I'll assign it to a new variable, I'll call this uh, Lusaka times, uh, payload, uh, I already called these titles, titles, and then I'll say equals. I don't know if people are still there, but I'm probably talking to myself, I don't know. Uh, pilot titles, and you notice that this is a list. If, if this is a list, come on. If this is a list, what I can do is, uh, let me just assign this again to, these titles, and then I'll say type. Sorry about that. Type. Isn't this something not happening here? Let me just go back here. I apologize just a second. Come back here and say, uh, okay. I have this. I'm going to call this uh, Osaka Times. Uh, payload input is equal to that. And then I'll say type, uh, let's try and see if this will work. Why is this thing, testing such a problem? This is weird. This is a list. Okay, length, 10. Why can't I get the type of this object? Okay, that's fine. Anyway, so I know that I have the 10 list items in here, right? And I can get these one, zero, one, all the way up to 10, right? Which is fine. And then what I can do now is I can, I can make use of pandas. I can say import pandas, the usual stuff as PD. I'll pause here to check if people are still online. At least I'm talking to myself. Okay, so they are following. That's good. Um, so I'll say import pandas, right? And then I'll say, uh, I'll create a new data frame because if you remember data frame, if you remember the, if you check the PD, if you check pandas, you notice that pandas enables you to transform certain Python objects into a data frame. So I can feed this a list and then I'll get back a data frame, right? I hope this type, I don't know why type is not working here, which is a bit weird here. Is it type of or type? Type of or something, it's type of, right? Oh, I probably assigned, uh, oh my goodness. That was very stupid of me. I think I probably assigned a uh, type to something, which is why, oh, 
foolishly, a type has become a variable, right? Which is why I can't check the type of this. But what you will notice is that this thing that I'm working for, uh, I'm working with is actually a data frame, right? It's a data frame. So because because this is a data frame, what I I can do is I can run the usual method that we've been discussing, right? I can check, I can run the head, head right? Uh, yeah, so that I see just one item there. Uh, I can I can do fancy things like I can splice this up, right? Using, uh, let's say I want to get just, well, of course this thing only has one column, but in the event that I didn't have one column, I could say I am interested in column number zero and I would have to splice this using iLock, right? Uh, so I'll say I lock, and then you see that I have access to. I can run. I can literally, I can literally use all these different pandas methods and variables because this is a data frame now. It's become a data frame, and because it's a data frame, what we can do now is we can now get to a stage where we we go to the stuff that we're looking at, where we say we import right from sk learn dot feature. I think it's feature extraction. Is it preprocessing feature extraction? The text, I think. Import count vectorizer, right? There we go. And then we can also import TFIDF, TFIDF vectorizer, right? Because we have, we've imported TFIDF vectorizer, what we can do now is we can say, okay, fine. What we would do then is we'll create um, an object of the vectorizer itself. So we'll say the sucker times, I'll call this vectorizer is equal to TFIDF vectorizer. I won't pass it any parameters, but remember, you can pass it fancy parameters. And I, I brought up this interesting notion of uh, uh, things like unigrams, bigrams, right? Those n-grams. There's an n-gram parameter that can feed to, TFID, to TFIDF vectorizer and count vectorizer. And what that does, it is it, it enables you to explicitly specify it. Say you want to consider the input text by taking into account the bigrams, for instance, or trigrams. Uh, if I were you, I'd advise you to experiment with trigrams in the topics that you're working towards, the, the mini projects you're working towards, right? Uh, trigrams are always better. It's a good starting point. But yet you can experiment with different vari variations. So unigrams, bigrams, trigrams, you can extend it even further if you want to, <clears throat> right? Although you'd be wasting time, really, you don't overdo this. So we create this, right? Uh, an instance of TFID factorizer. Then once you do this, uh, what you need to do is you need to you use this to actually fit Right, you'd fit, you'd fit this particular thing you're working with here, which would be this. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll just say fit and transform, right? Fit and transform method, I'll feed it the input. Once I fit it, what I have access to is a sparse matrix. Now, if you look at my sparse matrix here, what you immediately notice is, in fact, I hope you can run the shape. Can you run the shape? What you immediately notice here is that I have 10 records, and this vector that I have, it, it has, um, the, the, the levels that I have, right? The vocabulary, I have eight, eight, 89 words that would appear in my column, right? But I have 10 records here. So for each record, and you see the output just now, for each, for each observation, I'll have markers that will be associated with these 89 words in my vocabulary, right? So after this, what I can do is, uh, because I know the fit can work, I'll say, I'll assign this to sucker times, I'll call these features, equal to that. Uh, this features thing is the same thing that I was showcasing here. I can just say shape here, right? Shake the, oh my goodness. I did something stupid here. I shouldn't have said shape. I will do that. I will just fit and transform it like so. And then I'll come back here and say features dot um, shape. So I can run the same thing, right? So I have this. Now, once, once I have access to this, you notice that what you're working to, what you will be working towards is the stage where you can literally come up with this matrix. So you have a toy array method. This is what you want. So you, you can literally see that uh, uh, each of these, and this is because it's 10 observations, I suppose. Each of these 10 observations, right, is an array on its own. And each array is associated with the vocabulary, right? So if I get the first, if I get the first observation, for instance, this, this, this is the TFIDF representation associated with the first observation, right? Uh, and really what you can do is you can go a step further and just say var, looks like a times, 
Ooh, what was that? Was that the vectorizer, I suppose? And then you can say get feature names. So the feature names associated with that vectorizer are these things here. Right, uh, and uh, I think at some stage, let me see, at some stage we got to, to actually merge, if I can get to a stage where we can merge this, I guess. Let's just quickly do this. At some stage we got to merge the, the, the feature names with the, with the vectorized version of the text input, right? If you remember, I don't know if people remember what we did here. Uh, not here, actually. It would be da 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 da. Uh, right, so this is what we did here. So we again ran the pandas data frame, right? We go to a stage where we said pandas dot data frame, data frame, and then we say the, are we concatenating here? We're saying we, okay, so we create a data frame based on uh, Lusaka times, uh, Lusaka times, I'm getting confused here, is it data frame or vectorizer? Let me just go back, this is what I want. Okay, so I'll give this var Lusaka times uh, input, right? So we get to a stage where we want to combine now, it's first to make sense of this transformed data. Even though at this stage you can actually feed it to the estimators, but if you want to make sense out of this, you can use the data frame, uh, PD dot data frame. Uh, and then within here, you're saying you're going to combine the Lusaka times input uh, columns, col is it columns or column is equal to the Lusaka times vectorizer dot get feature names. Right, so this is what, if you notice, what we've created now is this thing that we would say Lusaka uh, times, now Lusaka times has become, I don't know what, fine, I suppose, this is weird. You'd have to think about good names here. So what you have now, if you notice, right, if I if we start checking the, the few observations that we have, like the, first, the second observation. Why can I not get the actual, this should be, what type is this? And I can't check the type because I've assigned this. But anyways, bottom line is uh, eventually this is what you end up with, right? Uh, uh, so a data frame that essentially has this vector that has 89 labels, right, across. These are the, these are the things in the vocabulary, right? If you remember, soccer times vectorizer to get, get Feature names. It has the these are the vocabulary that form your vector. These would be the labels, right? So these eighty nine things would be what you have here, and then you have numbers associated to. So what this means is that uh, for the second observation, for instance, the way the Zambians occurs in the second observation, and and, and we know it does. How do we know? We can get, go, go back to the payload. Hopefully this works. Ooh. We can go to. I hope it is payload, I can't remember anymore. Is it titles? Second time is payload titles. And get the 012. If you notice this, this word Zambians is there because Zambians is there, which is why the third observation here, under Zambians, oh, sorry, this, under Zambians, the TFIDF value is 0 0.353588, right? And something else to expect is the way the, the number 23. And true to that, if we go here, you see this for 23 years. So essentially, in a nutshell, what we're doing is we are working, we want to get to a stage where we transform the data so that we can uh, move on to the next stage. I don't know if this was helpful. Uh, a recap on if you have not read the, if you haven't gone through the lecture slides, this is a good enough summary of what the lecture slide is all about, although it's just a small little part of the lecture series, really. 